Acts of Loathing. Uh, I hope that this is recording. It's, I'm seeing some ep- uh, errors in Discord. Um, but, uh, failing that, let's get right going. Because I don't know how to fix it. Uh, well, uh, so as of l- last night, I had just finished up the or finished up what I was going to do of the Highland Lord's quest and am currently going to finish up the penultimate fantasy airship. Uh, Afterwards, I will be heading through and doing the giant's castle. So let's get right to it. Uh, This part is going to be a little bit tedious. There isn't a lot that goes into this. Um, and hey there we go see somebody's in chat there um but yes i can't actually hear my friend daniel i'm not sure why discord seems to be a little bit non-functional let me see if i can understand yeah it's i'm showing a no route error in discord don't know what the problem is there, but there is definitely a problem. Anyway, we're going to keep right on going. Uh, I hope I can carry this myself. So I've got the SOCK, and uh, so now the thing to do in the castle in the clouds in the sky is to get right here. But I am tiny relative to all of this, so I can't actually get there on my own. I have to go through the basement, go through the ground floor, and then also find a way up on top here. And I'm going to be able to find that way through the top floor. Uh, So I need to first equip the amulet uh, of earth-shattering importance. Extreme plot significance. There we go. And that's going to allow me to get through the non combats in here a little bit more quickly. There isn't a lot that I can do beyond burning delay to help out the second area, the ground floor. And I am not very, uh, I don't really have good ways of burning delay. So that's just going to be a straight up 10 turn tax, which is all right by me because there's some good items in there and I like those monsters. I don't have to worry about that silly, silly uh, procrastination giant because I'm using a ranged attack and I'll explain what I mean by that when I actually get there. Yeah, get that orally manual. This effect is quite helpful. Uh, it gives me four mysticality stats per fight. It's quite helpful for other classes, for mysticality classes. It's one of the better uh, mysticality stats per fight, mysticality stat gain buffs that there is. Um, and it's not so useful for me because MP doesn't really matter a lot to me, and I've already got enough stat to equip most everything that I need to equip. Hey, is that, mm, I just heard a sound, and there's some kind of announcement. Nope, I'm still getting that no route error. Well, so. yeah, okay, uh, yeah, so friend Daniel is present but unable to communicate with me and I with him. Um, Oh, wait. Nope, nope. I've got everything here. I don't know what the problem is. No idea. Getting the feed. Yeah, there's got to be some... 
problem with yeah I don't know if this discord it or if this problem is located in discord or if it's located in streaming I'm really okay I am in the voice chat am I getting any it's Daniel, can you somehow communicate to me whether I am streaming video or just voice? I'm going to type that question to you because apparently, because I have no idea of knowing whether. Okay, I am streaming video and voice. All right. Uh, okay, so I'm going to reposition my Discord window so that I can see what Daniel is typing at me. And hopefully he can let me know whether anybody else is typing things. Discord is not cooperating, okay. So this uh, area area used to be quite different and the quest used to also be quite different. I had to farm up a specific set of items and use them all or use some like map item or something when I had everything and until I had collected all of those items I would not be able to complete the quest. And now you can just click right on through it, and it's much, much more fun. There's better content. Uh, ooh, ooh, Daniel is calling me. Am I in the call? I'm connecting. This is exciting. This is good, good Twitch streaming. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you're liking this as much as I am, because I'm liking it a lot. This is just the, the, the primest of prime streams. But while Discord is doing its thing or failing to, uh, I'm going to start in on the ground floor. And in here is where I would encounter that procrastination giant, which is just the worst. Uh, it's, it's a terrible, terrible monster with a terrible, terrible effect. Uh, it's one of the few monsters in the game that provides more of a disadvantage when fighting than simply uh huh that's interesting uh than simply taking damage it is uh it uh if it hits you or if you hit it yeah, if you hit it with a melee attack, it will sneeze on you and provide the Kunkatitis effect, which, as far as I am aware, just straight up gives a 50% chance to fail on any given action in combat, which is awful. It really, really throws off your groove. But as long as you are using spells or ranged attacks, then that should not... And then that doesn't trigger. One of the other really bad ones is a special attack done by the protagonist in the previous zone, which provides, which if it hits you, the uh, it gives the effect amnesia, which prevents you from using any skills in combat. Which, when you've got a whole bunch of skills and you're used to using them, that can really throw off your game. Uh, Daniel is telling me that I probably have uh, mic aux running instead of voice meter, which does not seem to be the case of uh, within OBS, which uh, Obi Wan, mm, there's some joke in there, uh, is telling me that I am running voice meter and and not mic aux. Don't know what this problem is. It's it's all terrible. It's so bad. Um, hmm. What was I saying? Amnesia. Yeah, it's bad. Don't don't get it. It's unfortunate. It's a problem. 
problem. Yeah, it's, uh, Daniel is telling me that I need to open the voice meter app and it has not closed. I did close OBS for a little while, but that is... Maybe I'll, I'll close. Good technical problems. Just rolling right on through them. There was a suggestion a while ago to have more interactions between the penultimate fantasy airship equipment drops and the castle in the sky because there are like three yeah there are three monsters in the penultimate fantasy airship that have some kind of interaction that will speed up the castle and those are the quiet healer the Gun guy, gun bro, I don't know what his name is. Um, and the spunky princess. Uh, and each of them drop a piece of equipment that can speed up one area of the castle in the clouds in the sky. But the magic. Mm, the the mech uh, and the protagonist do not and there ought to be like it would be thematically quite consistent for the foodie giant and the renaissance giant to have some interaction with the oversized pizza cutter and the ridiculously huge sword but there isn't any interaction with that at this point I hope that eventually it gets uh, that eventually it gets introduced. Uh, you can hear me trailing off again because I'm still trying to poke around with uh, Discord's voice chat with Daniel. It's not working right now. Uh, I'm trying that live stream voice. It keeps flashing in between connected and no route. Ah, good streaming. Good streaming. Alright, so I've gone through the 10 turns that are required. I didn't get the electric boning knife that I wanted to get, which means I'm going to have to come back here during the level 13 quest prior to fighting the naughty sorceress. And I don't believe that I've got the Mohawk wig, so let's check that. Don't, ha don't have the Mohawk wig. So, instead of being sure that I can advance the quest, uh, finish the quest, when I encounter, when I get the non-combat encounter, I have a f instead a 50% chance, depending on which non-combat encounter I encounter. And this brown felt top hat is actually pretty cool. Uh, that if you keep pasting brass gears onto it, then the top hat gains more and more functionality, eventually uh, granting you some con a, a combat skill that does a decent amount of damage. And I don't believe that it costs any MP. So if you can get five brass gears, that's definitely something. What? That it's definitely something to paste up for yourself. Okay. Hmm. So apparently, I I did some weird shenanigans earlier with my VPN that may be causing this problem. However, what I did specifically was to end the process because it was being a butt. And so maybe if I reboot it and no, that's a really bad idea. That is a really bad idea. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, I, uh, Daniel is suggesting that I can't actually get off the VPN midstream. I can't. I'm, I'm not on the VPN, but I may have quit it in a bad way. Normally, last night I did have the P VPN on. If I were to reboot it now, it would probably temporary like provide some kind of connection interrupt and would might introduce something buggy into the stream. So yeah, all right, let's just keep on going, and I'll sort this crap out next time. Apologies for the excellent, just best possible Twitch stream quality that you're getting this evening. Uh, shout out to everybody who's made it this far. What I would like, if possible, to farm out of this top floor prior to finishing this quest area, finishing this quest, uh, would be three thin black candles, which will boost my meat drop in the level 12 quest quite considerably. I don't really have a lot of sources of meat drop at the moment. And so I, when I get around to helping out the, um, what's their names, the nuns, the extra source of 100% meat drop will save me a fair number of turns. I'm pretty sure, yeah, all right, I got the, I've seen three of these candles. So that's pretty nice. There we are, harumphing in disdain. Finishing the quest, outstanding. Gonna keep on going through the top floor because I want, to, because I need to uh, unlock the hole in the sky and there's something that I need to get out of that same that same non-combat that I encountered. Luckily though, having finished the quest, I am now guaranteed to be able to get to that non-combat. And so as soon as I get a non-combat again, I can uh, access the hole in the sky and get uh, farm up that Starkey, the Richard Starkey. I'm out of adventures. Oh, hey, I should absorb things. All right, so let's see. What all do I need to get? I uh, could would like some more meat drop or initiative or item drop. So I'm pretty sure that I have maxed my initiative. Maxed my meat drops. Maxed my item drops, or at least I can't get anything else quite so quickly. I think I will absorb myself a beating human heart. Duskwalker syringe will give me plus a hundred percent HP. That'll be nice. Oh, you know what else I ought to do is get myself some cold and spooky res resistance. Absorb an imp ale. Gonna absorb some uh, old coin purse, and that'll those will give me a bravery gland and subcutaneous fat. Then absorbing a plot hole for a shiver reflex. Absorbing some graps, grapes, grapes uh, for chatterable teeth. Quite appropriately, given how I was stumbling over that pronunciation there. Uh, gonna absorb some old mead for an adrenal gland, steampunk potion for a hyperactive amygdala, wad of tofu for a left eyelid, ectoplasmic, wait, no, not ectoplasmic orbs, beach glass bead, London frog, what is a London frog?
I am looking up what a London frog is. It is, ooh, booze. Cool, yeah, I'll absorb some of that. I can farm that up later on. All right, and some fancy bath salts for constrictable capillaries. And that'll be most of my absorptions for the day. Let's boost my HP a bit too, a bit more. I've got two absorptions remaining. I can give myself an oversized right kidney and a small left kidney. Wait, no. And some glutes. Yeah, glutes. The glutes are going to give me plus 25 muscle. Oh, hey, I can... No, no, I can't actually make any more absorptions. All right, so those are my 13 absorptions for my current level. It's unlikely that I'm going to get to level 12 in the 104. Well, no, I might make it to level 12 in the 104 adventures I have remaining. Oh. But... For now, I'm going to take a quick diversion and use one of those Abu clues. Along with peck oil and a mayo soak. to see how far I can get with the Abu Peak. And I mentioned before that this is basically a test of maximizing your HP along with your spooky and cold res. So I've got this pretty well in hand, it looks like. Yeah, that was a bit less, it was about 170 HP, which means that I could, if I wanted to, probably use a second clue with the HP that I have remaining and not get beaten up. But I think that I'm going to cast some gelatinous reconstruction to regain health before I do that. So, let's do that. Uh, cast three, no, three, j gel, ah, there we go. Got some myself at 40 hit points. Use clue, venture. And when I have, when I am able to go through all of this escalating damage uh, with the, with these clues, what I wind up doing is reducing the peak's hauntedness level by up to 30%. And if I can do that, uh, then that makes the, the Abu peak last for uh, seven adventures. If I do it right, then there'd be four adventures to get it down to 90%, and then those three adventures with the clues to get it down the rest of the way, and then one more adventure to actually light the pyre at the end. So eight adventures total for the zone, which is pretty good. I'm spending nine because I... I had to spend an extra adventure grabbing a third Abu clue. So healing up real quick and then using another clue. 
Unless, of course, I am interrupted by my Halloweener. There we are. Okie dokie. So, one more adventure here. Oh, and it's a semi-rare. Okay, let's just push that right up to 10 adventures. Uh, what does this Death Blossom actually do? It says that normally, flowers on an old battlefield are symbols of peace. This one came from an old battlefield that's still bristling with ghostly conflict, so it's more a symbol of just additional war. And if I were to use it in combat, it would deal 20 to 25 prismatic damage, which would be pretty nice if I needed that. But I usually don't. So, let's light that pyre and get the Highland Lord his pizza. So now I've got this Misty Cape, which is only enchanted with regular enchantments, and so it's much less useful to me than the... Uh, Protonic Accelerator Pack. So, now that that's done, I'm going to go back to the Castle in the Clouds in the Sky, and uh, I wish that I had some non-combat sources, but I don't. So, this is just going... Ah, here we go. Steampunk Choice. So it was just based on randomness that I got that. So with this steam-powered model rocket ship, I can head up to the hole in the sky, and what I want out of here is eight stars, seven lines, and a star chart. And that will allow me, that'll be enough for me to buy, excuse me, the Richard Starkey. As long as I'm farming up keys, I'll probably turn from here. Ooh, yes, all right. We've got an extra star, but that's all right. Let's turn from here to the 8-bit door. Or the 8-bit realm, the inexplicable door. So, talk to the crack, crackpot mystic who tells me of pixels, which are bullshit. I don't believe him for a second. But there's this weird door, so... Now, in this area, I would be olfacting these bloopers to encounter them a lot more, and I think that I may still banish the... What's their names? Uh, Bullet Bills. There we go. Thanks, Bullet Bill. Goodbye. Because these bullet bill only drops black pixels, which are which do not contribute in any way to the thirty white pixels that I want out of this zone. And with the thirty white pixels, I will be able to buy the digital key, which will be the last key that I need for the tower door in the level thirteen quest. And you can see that these monsters are pretty weak. I could be doing this just about at any point in the run. Um, it's basically a whenever you remember to do it kind of thing. And you can also probably tell that all of these are just references to 8-bit games. Interestingly enough though, the Goomba, all, you don't see that every ascension, you only see it in half of ascensions. On even numbered ascensions you, you see either the Goomba or the Buzzy Beetle, and on odd numbered ascensions you see the other one. There's a few other monsters that are like that, where they switch, I don't know, their genders or something based on what number of ascension you're in. Uh, but they're relatively infrequent. So I've got 
Uh, the Crackpot Mystic is also a vendor who takes your pixels and sells you stuff made from them. Um, so I've got 23 white pixels, which means that I need to buy seven more white pixels, and those each cost a red, a green, and a blue pixel. So if I buy seven, then I have enough for the digital key. And then after that, what I want to stock up on is these red pixel potions, which are the... Uh, they heal you, they are items that will heal you in combat, and of the things that are easily acquirable in run and don't require like a semi-rare or something, these are actually the best healing items that you can get. Uh, they will heal between, I believe, 100 and 120 HP. Yeah, when you use them in combat. Um... And I'm not going, I'm going to try and avoid using them to heal myself until fighting the shadow in the level 13 quest. And the reason that I want to do that is because four red pixel potions are guaranteed to kill the, um, the, the shadow, the adventurer's shadow where you may have to use an extra of the healing items that you can get from farming items in the war. Uh, because the, their range is 80 to uh, 120 HP. So there's a 50% chance, or not 50%, there, there's a chance that to heal yourself by 400 HP, which is what you need to do, uh, you'll need a fifth of those healing items where you only need four for the red pixel potions. Anyway, I'm going to make ten of these. Let's see if I can do that. Nope. I can't. I can make three of them, though. And these three red pixel potions plus one of the other healing items should be enough. So let's go talk to the council again. Give me this torn up glove and tell me about the person who's probably not my father it might be some snazz's father and oh no I don't have 100% uh, runs why uh, for the black forest there's a couple of ways to speed this up first you need to or the, the first and most accessible way is to switch your familiar to the reassembled blackbird, also known as the slash fam reass. Uh, alternately, the the reconstituted crow. Uh, both of those will help ad, uh, advance your progress in the black forest. And what I'm looking for here is to get to the black market. And so I'm charting around in the forest and the Reassembled Blackbird, either as my active familiar or just in my inventory, will help out with that. The other thing that will be helpful will be to get a pair of Blackberry Galoshes. However, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to need, er, that you're going to get those because you would need to in order to get those you would need to farm up 10 blackberries or I believe that you would need 10 blackberries and then also use that same non-combat to buy the galoshes so that's going to require 5 non-combats and generally here you're going to be minimizing the number of non-combat adventures that you receive because they don't advance your exploration of the forest. So they don't actually help you in the way that getting the beehive does. Or at least the four adventures spent in combat are probably going to 
be worth more than whatever your turn savings would be wearing, uh, acquiring and wearing the Blackberry Galoshes. Of course, if you can pull them, that's another story. That might be worthwhile then. Still, though, I'm going to be fighting the Blackberry Bushes because... Excuse me. Burpee snaz. Um, because I want the stats to level up, and having some blackberries is also not bad. And at that point, anyway, I can't really do anything about having received a non-combat adventure. Uh, this enemy also you kind of want to try at least to avoid hitting with a melee attack because if you do, they'll scratch you up with your thorns. Nobody wants that. Well, they may, may want that. They may be like Audrey too, except they drink through their skin rather than through a mouth. Maybe. I don't know. Speculation. Landmarks, found the black market, gonna buy myself a Zeppelin ticket because that's way more fun than going through the pirates, and a cup, eh, just one thing of black paint for now, and the forged identification documents. And before I leave, I for a while, I don't know if this is still true, but for a while the black cherry soda was the best way to regenerate your MP. The, the meat price for this is, yeah, it's the most efficient way to convert meat into uh, mana points or mojo points or muscularity points, I think the other one is. Um, I believe, though, that that may have changed. I think that the Knob Goblin Seltzer in the Knob Goblin Dispensary is... Uh, equivalent to this at this point, though I may be wrong. I could check though. Is that 9 to 11 MP, 80 meat? Let's go check. Alright, Seltzer. 8 to 12 MP, 80 meat. Okay, so yeah, the, the Knob Goblin Seltzer is the same as the it uh, has the same average at uh, meat per MP as the black cherry soda, although it is swingier, which which a lot of people prefer to avoid. Okay, so heading over to the desert beach, to the shore, to the vacation. I'm going to read that diary, and this is the point at which we equip our UV uh, resistant compasses, which I got much, much earlier in the run. Equip so OUV. Got it. And so this, uh, this ultra hydrated effect is. I don't know if there are trade-offs to, if there are benefits to not having it. I know that if you run out of the ultra-hydrated effect, then you start gaining debuffs and also lose a lot more HP per adventure than if you have it. I Occasionally you'll need to spend a turn to get it, to, excuse me, to get it back. However, if you do not have this effect active, then you can't get the, oh, uh, what are they called? The pages of the training thing, ah, man, the worm writing training handbook. Uh, and that is definitely going to be worth whatever adventures you spend maintaining ultra hydrated. 
the UV... It, okay, so the basic uh, narrative for this zone is that you're going to be, like you were with the um, Black Forest, you're going to be exploring this area. And it gives you a percent of exploration in the base game. This 4% explored here is Mafia just making explicit how much you have done already. The UV resistant compass that I have equipped is giving me a base plus 1% per adventure. So I'm exploring this twice as quickly as I otherwise would. And then once we get to 10%, we're going to meet the gnomes and see what all they want us to do. One of the things that they're going to want is for us to find and reassemble their worm writing handbook. And in order to do that, um, or in order to take advantage of that, once I have assembled the handbook, I need an item out of here, the drum machine. And as long as I've sunk three turns into here, I should spend another three or so and get the Desert Rose. Stone Rose, Stone Rose, okay. All right, I've still got two turns of Ultra Hydrated left, so I'm gonna spend them in the Arid Extra Dry Desert. One of the additional things that the love bugs will do for you is occasionally they'll give you a situation situationally appropriate item or buff or just some extra stats at the end of a fight and what they will do for you in the arid extra dry desert is that i think there's a one in three chance that they'll give you a three turn uh extension of your ultra hydrated buff so i'm Gonna adventure more in the in the desert on the hopes that they will keep me from having to spend the turn to refill at the oasis. I'm gonna be real sad next year when the love bugs go out of standard. Real sad. Cry for days. Oh no. Alright, well let's go back to the oasis. Stupid bugs. All right, so I've got my first worm writing page. I need to get 14 more. There used to be an excellent, excellent joke in, I think, the Oasis, where you found the first page of the worm writing manual, and then you found the second page, and so you're like, oh man, this is going to take forever to find all 15 pages and then the next thing you find is pages 3 through 15 which is just a really good joke and I'm sorry that they that the new mechanic compelled them to do away with it although I suppose they could have changed it to be like okay now you, you found I don't know, you found two worm writing pages and then three worm writing pages and then you find, instead of finding the 15th worm writing page, you find worm writing pages 15 through 100 or whatever. It would have been a, a different way to run, run with it, but they didn't do that. Of course, now we're verging into make a, well, make a KOL territory, uh, which everybody knows is a waste of time. Not everybody, people still do it, and they are a valid portion of the fan base, and I have no intention to badmouth them. I just don't interact with it myself. You know, instead of justifying myself, I should just apologize. I'm sorry, Make a KOL people. I do respect you. I just get caught up in the rest of the player base's uh, disdain, and that's a bad thing for me to do, so I'm sorry. So I've got 11 of these pages. 
so far, 13. Hopefully in the next couple adventures I can get the rest. Or, uh, often I can get all the worm writing pages by 40% explored, which means that I only have to turn in a couple of extra things instead of, and keep my time spent in this zone and in the oasis to 26 turns exactly, but it seems like that might not be the case this time. Yay! 26 turns exactly. Head over to Nasir, give you the stone rose, give you the black paint, give you the missing pages of your book. The other thing that you can turn in here is a uh, killing jar, and that will get you another one of these desert sightseeing pamphlets. Each of these pamphlets gives you 15% exploration, like that, and like that again. And then the worm writing hooks give you 30%, which if you can get to, excuse me, if you can get to 40% exploration and then have the stone rose and a um, thing of black paint and get all those pages from the worm writing manual, then that's... Uh, just enough to complete the exploration of the desert. And so I've unlocked the small pyramid and I'm unequipped to actually interact with it just yet. So what I've got to do instead is uh, explore the Spooky Raven Manor a little bit more and then go through the Copperhead Club, the Red Zeppelin, and the Hidden Temple. And I know that going through the pirates would be faster, but I like the Copperhead more. And this isn't really a speed run, it's just sort of a speedy run. Speed runs A through E, or A through D were already occupied. That's a real bad joke, Frank, you should be ashamed. Alright. So now I've got to fight some snakes in zones that I've already explored. Oh hey, yay, Kuwerty! Welcome back. So uh, I don't know when all you joined us, Kuwerty. I am currently going through the. Uh, Copperhead quests because I like them better than the Pirates quest and this has already been established to not be a speedrun. Uh, other thing to catch you up on is that the voice chat really isn't working so this is the Frank show instead of the Frank and Daniel show. I should probably correct that in the broadcast but I really don't care that much. So I'm fighting the snakes, or getting to the snake. Yay, snake. Sniggity snack. All right. Back to the copperhead. Now what I want in the Copperhead area is one of these, yay, crappy waiter disguise. And that's going to let me light the whole place on fire. And I am not kidding, that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. So I'm crappily disguised as a waiter, which gives me a non-combat adventure, which sets everything on fire. And I'm gonna be taking more damage with this effect, act, or with this club state active. Um, but I can probably survive it if I can actually keep an eye on my HP and act accordingly. Um, and the trade-off for that, for taking more advantage, or mm, taking more damage, is that if I can get 
unnamed cocktail drops from the bartenders, then they turn into flaming what's-his-names, which are an item that will help in the next stage of the Copperhead quest line. The other... Uh, I'm not the only person who's going to be taking additional damage with the place on fire. The uh, environmental effect will also deal damage to them. I think there's a 50% chance of it choosing to hurt me instead of them. But the uh, damage is worth the effect. So I'm going to cast myself some Jella. Let's cast Tangella. Alright. Hold this guy. I probably ought to figure out how that whole Copperhead quest line mechanic works. I, I know it's predictable, but it would be nice to not retread these areas as much as I normally do. Okay, um, so I'm almost out of adventures here. I'm going to take this chance to cheat a little bit. Literally cheat, I think. Moxie stat... Then, I don't know, what else should I get? Maybe a laboratory could be useful. And plenty. Just in case I spawn anything that gives me a uh, valuable absorption or effect or whatever. Yeah, the snake with like 10 heads, one of the best creatures in the game. How many heads does it actually have? It actually has 10 heads, huh. I'm pretty sure that at one point there were nine. That point apparently has passed, though. Back to the copperhead. And but, but what I mean by that is I'm pretty sure that Jake redrew it to have actually ten heads, where previously it was just like ten heads. Okay, so I've got this unnamed cocktail. After the next fight, that'll turn into a flaming what's-his-name. I am cutting this kind of close. Let's summon a mosquito. Yeah. Alright, got that flaming what's-his-name. Out of turns, out of absorptions. This has been Midnights of Loathing. Thanks for joining. Sorry that the broadcast sucked. I'm gonna fix that for next time. I hope you're having a lovely evening, and if you do, you won't. Stop recording.